Okay, so here we are with a graphing supplement for polar coordinates. So I'm using a Desmos, the online graphing utility that's available for free. And the first thing I'm having a look at, notice we have R equals A plus B cosine theta is our formula up in the top of, that's the number one entry in this graphing calculator um, input. Line two is a slider for B values and line three is a slider for A values. Right now, B is set to be three and A is set to be zero. That means that our equation is really R equals three cosine theta. Now, notice on the graph that this results in a circle. Three cosine theta is a circle just touching the pole with diameter three. So if you look from the pole out to the right, it looks like it passes through the point. Uh, uh, the polar coordinate would be three comma zero, which is uh, unfortunately the same as the Cartesian coordinate, but that's just a coincidence. So um, a circle is very similar to the family of Lima songs. When it's just that A is equal to zero in this case. Well, Remember that the Limasson family is broken up into four different cases, depending on how B and A relate to each other. So let me change B to have a radius of four. Just make it a little bigger. Now we have a circle of radius four, by the way. And uh, A is equal to zero in this case. So before we noticed that this circle sort of laps around itself twice when we go from zero to two pi. Well, this should be evident as soon as I change A by a little bit, I'm gonna make it a little positive. We grew another loop, an inner loop inside here. In fact, the outer thing is no longer a circle. So we've kind of kinked it away from each other. Really, you see just, if I can get it in just kind of close here. The closer A is to zero, the closer this thing is to a circle. And if we go past it to the negative side, we're still, the other loop is moving inside the other one. So we see that um, a circles and limassons are actually very, very closely related. It's just when A is zero, we have a circle. Um, and there are still two loops to it when we go from zero to two pi. Now let's see, let's go to some of our classic cases. A is one and B is four. This is, uh, this is when A over B, remember in magnitude, is strictly less than one. We get a limason with an inner loop. It's exactly what we're looking at here. It's exactly what we were looking at here too when we were barely, barely past zero. We had uh, A was 0.3. So we can continue to modify these things too. Let's see, let's get this to become A equals, uh, we need to go between one and two. So when the ratio A over B is exactly one, what did we wind up with in that case? We're supposed to have a limason, or sorry, a cardioid. That's exactly what we have right here. This thing has a cusp. That inner loop just went away. Oh, in fact, it actually, if we zoomed in, that one wouldn't have worked. Uh, 4.1 is just a little too wrong. There we go. Four is the one we were looking for. But notice, so that's our cardioid, A over B equals one. Now just move this just a little bit. What happened? We just jumped into the range of uh, this thing being a limason with a dimple or dimpled limason. Take it a little further so we can see, ah, oh, okay, right. This is that limason with a concavity. It no longer has a cusp, even though it does look a little pointy there. Um, it is smooth there. And, you know, we can keep bringing this out until we get to a certain point where A over B is greater than two, right? So, you know, we still have that limason with the dimple in it, still got a concavity, still got a concavity. We're gonna get really, eight should be our cutoff zone concavity. Oh, there it is, exactly, where we turn to a convex limason. So for a little bit here, this thing's exactly flat on that left side, at least at the, the angle value of pi, whatever the point value is, it looks like four or negative four, which we could find, negative four, or positive four pi would be the, the polar coordinate where this thing is exactly flat. And then as it continues, we just have this big convex limason in front of us. So those are the limasons. Let's do something a little different here. Let's plug in, let's put an A inside here. That's gonna throw it haywire for a moment. Don't worry about whatever that is. Um, 
that's interesting as well. Um, feel free to have some fun with these, of course. Um, B, it, B cosine A theta. So this should be the family of roses. Let's see that that's the case. Let's, let's fix A to only an integer value. Okay, let's make it a little tamer here. A is one. All right, so B cosine theta, that's four cosine theta. That's just a circle again. Okay, so this is somewhat related to the circle, um, which is interesting. The circle is sort of the basic polar coordinate or polar curve. Um, so that's actually a nice fact to have lying around. Anyway, uh, let's start to change A. We should only plug in whole numbers for A. Decimal values create really interesting, rich looking curves, but nothing that we need to be concerned with in this course right now. For instance, that's pretty neat. But notice that for decimal value, we've got these overlapping petals, right? And that, that's a bit of a nuisance. So for any whole number values of A, we've got, uh, We've got non-overlapping petals, okay? So continue, let's see for an odd number. We know that for an odd number, it's supposed to have exactly that number of petals, right? So when A is three, there it is. We've got three petals for A being three. We've got eight petals when A is four. Uh, notice we, if we change B, B can be a decimal value. It's just changing the radius, right? The distance from the pole, the petal tips are, we can shrink it. Um, we could even invert it, right? Kick it back the other way, change where all the points are. Um, at any rate, uh, there's our object. So B is just a rescaling factor. It just changes the size of things. Okay, so those are the roses. Um, we could change cosine to sine. That might be interesting. Uh, I'll refrain from that for now. Let's set this back to four and let's set this to a two. And we know what we're setting up for here. We're setting up for a limnoscape. We can get A to be two, there it is. So let's write R now as R squared, B cosine A theta, and unfortunately, this poor thing doesn't know how to do that. So, okay, what do we need to do? R is, that's because it's not a well-defined expression. That's why that's happening. Parenthesis here. And then let's, can we, well, I'll just put B cosine theta in there, then B. Cosine theta and now we'll need to move to the end here. Get rid of all this. So, okay, so we've got part of this thing. Let's, uh, we're gonna have to add uh, an equation here. So same thing. We have to do the minus version of it. It's a little bit silly to have to do all of this, but Desmos just doesn't know what to make of the dependent variable being squared. And that's fair enough. That's a, perhaps a difficult thing to calculate or to, to program. So we have B cosine A theta. And I'm missing the A above. So look at that. I've got a lunar skate more or less in the show here. Uh, let's get this one to have an A in there as well. Now I'll fix it up. Okay, so it looks like we didn't need the other one. Um, I'm not going to try to go into explaining why that would be the case. It looks like if we range our angles enough that we'll pick up all the different parts that we might need to come across. So anyway, there's our lemnus gate. If we change sine to cosine, that thing would be vertical. I know we've already seen the cosine version, but um, feel free to use Desmos to kind of help out um, how to see how these things are, are plotted. Um, what I'd like, you know, one thing I'd recommend is if we could change this portion here to a slider for a rose, then you could see how the rose is drawn and which direction that happens. I've tried to point that out in the other videos. Um, it should be clear, but this could be even more helpful with that. 
it's more useful. It's more of a learning moment to use, uh, to do that by hand. So try that as well, but this thing could also back you up. So there's a, just a brief take on these families of curves in Desmos. It's a nice tool, so be sure to use it.